Alrighty. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Kendall Clements and Scott Bird talking today about Tenant Solutions. It's a Facebook group that we uh, host and a, uh, a podcast that we host. Today is September 13th, 13th. Yep. 2022. And uh, Tenant Solutions is a Facebook group uh, that we encourage you to, to participate in. It's designed to be an advocacy uh source for tenants to become the best tenants they possibly can be. Uh, It's also available for landlords to better understand the landlord-tenant relationships. We're not a legal advice group, but it's just good information and our focus is to help tenants really be the the best that they can be. I think that's what everybody needs to understand. We're we're hoping, we're advocating for the tenants. We're trying to help them. We we have a perspective from maybe from our younger years when we did rent but from a perspective of a property owner or management company, but we understand what the tenants might need. So we, we want interaction, of course, with, with tenants, but um, we're here to help you. We're help, here to yeah. help the tenants. And I don't know if it's good to give a little bit of a backlog, but uh, Scott and I both own property management companies. We've been in real estate for like a bazillion years. Um, we both own real estate. You know, we're both landlords as well, and we both rented before in our lives. And I've missed rent payments before in my life, so I, I, I get that perspective yeah. out there. And uh, and I think at some point we might have our tenants on here as well. I've talked to my tenants about about my goals with this, with Tenant Solutions. I don't know if you have yet, but yet. Yeah. Um, boy, I, good response from them. And I, th- I think it'd be great to have them on here as, as guests at some point yeah. and, and talk to them. And so as we go through the conversations, feel free to, to comment below. Scott and I will respond to those comments, and uh, but we'll go forward with that. So we've got these three topics today we're going to hit on. Uh, our first topic is going to be on, you know, I think it's an important topic, is when a landlord or a homeowner sells the property, what happens to my lease? And we're also going to talk about uh, light bulbs, air filters, water softener, salt, pest control, those type of things. What is a tenant responsible for on these routine yep. maintenance type things in a home and then we're going to wrap up with inspections and how often a landlord can do them and from a tenant's perspective is what's their rights uh, the term is quiet enjoyment what's your right to quiet enjoyment out there and so exactly there's always that intruding landlord that comes at the worst time do they have the right to do that or can you tell them no yeah and let's, so let's we'll, we'll dive into some that. topics on there so Starting off here is let's let's talk about the lease when a property owner sells. Right now, uh, our our base market is in Utah, and Utah is a, is a hot real estate market. We've had quite a few homes bought and sold, uh, both here in the St. George area as well as up in Cedar City. And so this happens from time to time that uh, the tenant discovers the landlord's going to sell the house, yep. and with a tight housing market, what sets in? Panic, right? Yeah, where am I going to live? What happens to my lease? Am I going to stay here? Am I going to get kicked out? Yeah, do I have 30 days before I get kicked out? But I just signed a lease and it's got 10 months left on it. What are my rights? Yep. Right? So, uh, I so guess... what are your rights? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so in the state of Utah, what I've learned in my research and in our practices is, is the state of Utah wants to protect that tenant. If you've signed a lease agreement... Uh, in the state of Utah, unless it states otherwise in the lease is a specific term, is that lease has to survive closing. And survive closing means if you have a 10 month lease and that property gets sold, you still have 10 months on that lease that the new owner has to honor those exact terms. They can't yeah, when, come in and modify when it. That, when, that own, when that buyer buys that property, they're also buying the lease. Yep. So it doesn't change, it's still an, that new owner has to agree or has to follow the terms of that lease as well. Yeah. They can't come in and just, just change it. They can't come and dissolve it. They can't come and wipe it out and start something new unless unless the tenant wants to, right? Yeah. It may be a good idea to that, but without, just on the face value, they can't come in and just and wipe it out. Well, in the, just in the last six months, I've seen and I've talked with people that are looking for housing because they're saying, hey, the landlord's selling the house and they say, I have to be out. Yeah. And I've had an opportunity to consult with some people on that and say, well, wait a minute, let's take a look at your lease because it has to survive closing, right? Now, now, that's probably the first thing to do though, is, yeah. is, is 
have somebody or have us. <laughs> That's why yeah. we're here. Uh, send us your leads. Like we'd, we'd happily review it or, yeah. or ask someone that you trust um, and get a second set of eyes on it. Yeah, and there's some uh, services out there. Um, there's some legal services that will do it for free that can take a look at it. Um, there's some resources with the state and the counties that look at it, but it, um, it doesn't hurt to reach out to somebody that works in that field and they give some good, good advice yeah. you know, always out there. Um, I think it's important to understand though that everything's negotiable, but you should do it from the perspective of the lease, knowing your rights that are within the parameters of that lease. My counsel would be to, to don't give up those rights, but take a look to see if it makes sense because what has happened is the new buyer comes in and says, well, I want to occupy the home. I might be willing to say, you know what? Take 30 days to get out. I won't charge you a month's rent. I'll guarantee you your deposit will come back to you if you would just be out on X date. So you're, you're painting yeah. the scenario that it sell, the property sells and the new owner wants to now occupy, occupy it. it. Okay, so, so, so they the might, tenant would be faced with... They might approach you with an offer, but knowing that you don't have to take the offer, you know, understand that if you know what your terms of your lease are and your rights on that lease, it gives you a negotiating tool. Right. And I think that's the, the most important thing is it's not to use the tool to bully your way around, but to not be bullied. You know, if they come and say, hey, you got to be out and we're going to give you this money and you just accept it, well, that might not be to your advantage because moving is not inexpensive. Uh, right. It might cost several thousand dollars to move a family of three from one house to the other and all the hassle of you know, moving utilities or, yeah, yeah, it, you know, a dish or a cable system or whatever, yeah. um, changing kids' schools. There's a whole host of things that it doesn't make sense on. But you don't have to, you don't have to buy into that. If your lease is a 10 month remaining yeah. on your lease and they come in and say, hey, here's your 30 day notice, uh, you don't have to, don't freak out. You just talk to them, so there's 10 months left on our lease. Yeah. Um, you're up, you're able to stay there and fulfill the lease agreement. So they need to understand that they need to honor that as well. So if they've got, it could be a situation where they got wrong information from yeah. a realtor or a family member or their understanding of, of, the, of the law that they <coughs> think they just can just give you a notice and you're, and you're out, but it's not the case. So first thing I think that you need to understand is that lease does transfer to that, to that new owner. Yeah. 100%. You, you brought up a good point there, Scott, though, of what if I'm a tenant and I'm on month to month and the homeowner goes to sell? Then what are my options? What yeah, do you see there? Yeah, good good point. But every lease will still determine or still outline in that lease what happens. Um, let's say there's no transition in, in the ownership of the property. Um, what happens in your lease if it transitions into month to month? There's still terms in there that, that say what happens. And usually... It, uh, there might be a, an additional charge for a month to month, so the, the owner may, may collect more rent. Yeah, they um, charge you more for a month to month. There still should be a 30 day notice for vacating. So if you if you're gonna if they want you out at the to terminate the lease, it's usually a 30 day notice. So those should still apply, and that would tr apply with the new owner when the yeah. new owner uh, becomes takes over takes over the property. So that doesn't change. That doesn't change. But if you have a month-to-month -month lease, yeah. this might be where you're going. Yeah, if you're a month-to-month, -month, then they could come in and give you a 30-day notice of non-renewal. I think that's what we term it as. Yeah. Is just, we're not going to renew the lease at the end of the term. You've got to be out. Correct. And then your options uh, become very narrow at that point. Uh, the time is ticking yep. on you there. And, yeah, and that and that's a that's a good point about terminating. If <clears throat> is is a month to month in the best, uh, in the best. Is it a good strategy for a tenant to stay month to month? You know, the, yeah. The initial term of the lease has come to an end. Is that good or bad, right? Terminating, I mean, having month to month may not be <coughs> the best scenario for you, or it might be the best thing. Cause if you're only month to month, it's easy to terminate. If you're in long term, well, it's hard to, to, to terminate, but it's, it's uh, you're committed to that time frame. So yeah. anyway, it can be plus or minus. Is you have to decide whether it's best for you. But uh, a month to month has to be honored still with the new landlord. Yeah. It's just easier to dissolve. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think you know as we kind of wrap up this section, you know, I think some yeah. of the good points out there is 
really understand what the terms of your lease are because it empowers you. It gives you that, that knowledge and confidence that, that if someone tries to push you in a direction that's not correct, you have a foundation to stand on and uh, you should be able to stand up for yourself in that regards yep. Yep. out there. But I think uh, another thing that I think is important is is being strategic about your lease. You know, if you want to stay where you're at for a period of time, it's good to lock in for one or even two years on that lease with confidence. Yeah. But if you're thinking about buying a house or moving to a different area, then a month to month might be a strategy. Or you can even talk to your landlord and say, hey, I'm not sure where I'm going to be at. Can we just do a six month for right now and lock in? Those things are negotiable. Yeah. Landlords, I think, like the stability of a lease that's locked into place. Right now, it's not as, as big a deal for a landlord because everything rents. But traditionally or historically, uh, properties have a hard time leasing out during the holidays. And so they don't ever want a lease to end November, December, January because they might sit empty yeah. for 30, 60, 90 days. And it becomes expensive for a homeowner to or a landlord to have a vacancy for 30 days. That's three months of rent. They can't make up any yeah. other way and so that's a, that's a good point <laughs> they they like to have those long-term leases and they also like to have them strategic on certain times seasonal. of the year that, that are seasonal out there yeah so yeah just to threaten don't threaten to vacate right in december 31st <laughs> yeah that's that's <laughs> a hard one to you know the landlords usually would like you to stick through until the start of the year and in reality in springtime is the best time to yeah Move and find rentals, but or or if it's a yeah. uh, if you're in a college town, you know, in between semesters or when it slows down. But yeah. anything else we need to cover on that? You know, um, the Department of Real Estate or the the Division of Real Estate is part of the Department of Commerce in the state of Utah. They specifically put in the real estate purchase contracts that that lease has to endure, and so it's not just something that uh, your lease is unique to it's actually part of the real estate contract and uh, if you have any questions on that you know ask to see that purchase contract to make sure that I was in in there sure yeah uh, out there but it, it specifically says that it has to endure uh, unless it's specified in the lease yep. that it has a termination clause in the lease. and one, one other thing that I don't know if, <clears throat> if a tenant would come across this or not but in uh, contracts once a crop pop, once a property is under contract, that owner selling the property uh, in Utah is not allowed to enter into a new agreement. So if you if you know that the property is selling and it's coming right down to the closing date, and they try to hurry and get you to sign a new agreement, uh, depending on the circumstances, they probably aren't able to do that. And so it's probably a red flag to look at you know kind of be cautious on that if they're trying to get you to hurry and sign a new agreement. Before the property property sells, that's a good point. Without the new buyer's permission, so you may just refuse to do that. Uh, may not. I don't know. It just kind of depends on the circumstances that you're in. But that's uh, something. Because uh, in that scenario, if the if the seller executes the lease in that time frame where it's under contract, the new buyer didn't agree to that. That lease might be voidable. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. And then you have no legal standing out there so yeah. be mindful I think some good advice is, is if you're renting a home and the seller puts on the market it's not time to panic it's time to you know keep your head about you but it doesn't hurt to reach out to some experts in the field and most experts will sit down with you and counsel you at no cost I know that we will do that in our company I assume you're yeah, doing yeah. yours yeah. Um, because um, really we're out advocating for the best tenant possible and you may not rent with us today, but I want to give you advice that, that uh, is beneficial to you so you make the best decisions out there. So. Yeah, perfect.